welcome to another episode of Not Cool with me, Sarah Highland. Today I have a really, I'm so pumped. I've been trying to get her on my podcast for I guess like a year. Sorry, yeah, it has been a while. No, 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 it's not you. I've only asked you once. This was the second yeah, time. Yeah. So, um, she is a stand-up comedian, a podcaster. She just started a podcast with Miss Brittany Ferlin, mm -hmm. who's also a stand-up comedian and a beautiful person called This Is The Worst. Mm -hmm. And... Brittany Schmidt, everybody. Brittany Hello. Schmidt. Oh, thanks for having me. Of course. Sorry for playing hard to get. <laughs> it's kind of my game, you know? Make, make her want it more. Really, in your defense, yeah. I think in my passive aggressive, uh, so I didn't get turned down straight out. It was like a more of like, if you ever want to, and that was a year ago. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? You know what? You're right. And then I was like, I have not felt called. <laughs> Here's the thing with podcasts. There's so many of them, you know, no, I and know. I love you and I adore you, but my energy for it is, especially now that I have my own, yep. it's low. Yeah. But when you reach back out, I was like, I love you. I adore you. I want to sit and talk to you, even if we're the whole world is listening. Yeah. Well, I know. And you know what? The When I first started doing it, it was at the comedy store, mm -hmm. right? It was more... Um, that, yeah, there was a more freshness about it right. where I would like – there was like this excitement about yeah. asking people. Yep. <laughs> because the naivete that being like, this is the only podcast they're going to come right, on. Right, right. Like huge names, you know, like big names. And then the longer that I've gone, the more I'm like, I don't want to – I mean, I, I, I can't I know. Them. I'm the same way and I just started my podcast. I asked like three people and they like put me in touch with their assistant. They're like, yes, um, we want to do it. Here's my assistant's info and the assistant's like – in six to nine months and i'm like how about i just kill myself instead <laughs> like how about I how about i just take myself out at least you have an action followed by it <laughs> i am just like of course of course they won't come up yeah no, no no no. i mean but that's like the alcoholism in our brains right like yeah. i am a piece of shit and i should die <laughs> yeah <laughs> because so quick busy. Yeah. yeah they're busy and i should kill myself <laughs> Yeah, That's no, but thought, but the precursor to that, I'm a piece of shit. I'm gonna kill myself. Is usually the thought of I have this is I'm doing amazing. Like this is best. a great podcast. <laughs> I'm the best. I am the best. Everyone should be yeah. so honored to be in my presence. And mm -hmm. then the second somebody says six to nine months, I'm like, I'll kill myself. Yeah, yeah. I knew you hated me. They fucking hate yeah. me. What am I doing? I'm going to yeah. move to a farm. Yeah, I'm going to move to a farm. I'm going to throw my phone in the ocean. Yeah. So oh. you don't want to come on my podcast. You're never going to be able to get a hold of me again. Yeah. Because I don't Why? even have a phone anymore. It's Guess in the we fucking tried. Pacific, bitch. An orca whale. <laughs> An orca whale. Okay, yeah. All right. We did. Okay, so there's so many questions, actually, Brittany, before you, because I yeah. usually I prepare these, you know, questions, but you have so much going on and have had so much going on that I was like, what direction? Because one, we have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. One, I actually met you via sobriety right i say that i think you're pretty open about I'm it i'm very yeah. open i don't care i've had people jump down my throat for saying that's how we know people so i'm the same as you like very careful but i don't give a fuck i'm like yeah i'm okay in the rooms baby okay yeah which is uncanny because i tell Brittany this a lot before i met you in person i actually knew who you like face to face with mm -hmm. you I don't know how it happened, but I came across one of your posts on social media, mm -hmm. and you had it was when it was a special. I don't know if it was Comedy a special. Central. Yeah, it was Comedy a short. Central. Yes, yes, and you had the black jumpsuit mm -hmm. on, and your hair was like this, like yours, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, this bitch is mm. stealing my style. This bitch, <laughs> this bitch, this bitch spent time curling her hair, it looked really to good. look like my natural hair. How dare she? But I, it was – I always have those things. I don't know if you do – like I always have like a premeditated vision mm -hmm. and then I end up meeting the person. And then, of course, I met you and I left you. And I was like, of course, Aww. she's sober. You're sweet. Yeah, everyone tends to think I'm a giant bitch mm. before they meet me. And then sometimes when they meet me, they're like, I was right. She is a bitch. <gasps> but a lot of times I'm not. But sometimes I am. But most of the times I'm not. You know, I think people look yeah. at me and they're like, oh, she's – whatever whatever and then they think i'm a, gonna be a cunt and then i'm i'm usually not unless you catch me on a bad day you not know? really i cannot uh, you're a no every person i've ever talked to has met you and by the way i'm gonna have a quick flex on myself okay i was in san diego this past weekend and a comedian came up to me and she, we were just sitting there talking 
and this might be an insult to you, but it's a flex for me. Okay, can't wait. Um, she was just staring at me while we were talking. She goes, God, do you know who you look like? And usually it's like back when I was younger, it was like Renee Zellweger, but I think yeah, it's yeah. the voice and what have yeah. you. Um, she's like, Brittany Schmidt. Aww. And I was like, I love Brittany Schmidt. And she goes, I know she's very special. I said that. Her name was Ellen. Sugarman. DeGeneres. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine? She's like, she's very special. I've, I've had a very eye on her. <laughs> yeah, you kind of look like Portia she de was, Rossi. Yeah. She's like, if it doesn't work like, out, Portia. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Brittany. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. It's always nice to hear people say nice things about you because I think, again, maybe this is like a very alcoholic thing. In my mind, mm. everyone hates me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, everyone fucking thinks the worst things about me. Yeah. Um, but that I think is just me projecting what I think about myself to the world. Yeah. yeah. No, I get what well, makes you a really good comic. Mm. Right? Mediocre, according to the internet. Okay, calm <laughs> down. Calm down. According Horrible. to the internet, I Horrible. should have literally according killed myself men. three years yeah. ago. Yeah. So. yeah, I should be dead two, <laughs> two years ago. I should have killed myself. You know, it's one of the funniest things ever. My ex husband, who I'm still friends with, um, he. Um, I was really depressed after the divorce mm -hmm. and like I had a moment where I was really, really deep in suicidal ideation. I couldn't get out of it. It didn't matter how many meetings I went to. It didn't matter how many therapy sessions I had. I just couldn't get out of it. Mm -hmm. I was so down bad. And I went over to his house and I remember it was like I just got off a horrible leg of tour and I was just sad. I was like, this is sad. I'm on tour. When I'm on the road, it's so lonely. It's so isolating. And then I come home to nothing. And when I don't have my dog, I really just have an empty place. And I'm like, this is what am I here? here for and then I was at his place and I was just like I'm not doing real well and I like laid on the floor and I started crying and he's like are you gonna are you gonna kill yourself and I was like I want to and he's like you can't and it's not because I want you alive he's like it's because so many people want you to kill yourself and I started <laughs> laughing so hard I was like you fucking asshole He's like, you would make way too many people happy if you got out of here. And so now I can't take it. So now my life is an act of revenge. <laughs> like, it really is. I'm Good here. win for your ex-husband. That oh was a God. nice move. No, he's the best. He knows. I mean, he was married to me for so long. He knows yeah. how to handle me when I'm like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And he knows that like making fun of me is the only way to get me out of it. Because being like, you're amazing. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you're fucking depressed. Like yeah. someone being like, you're amazing. So many people want to be you. Like you're so funny and smart. And cool. I'm like, I'll put a fucking bullet in my head yeah. right now <laughs> but yeah. when he's like everybody wants you dead i'm like you're right <laughs> you're right dog <laughs> yeah. well i and i think i wonder that too like if you're hard again this is more of a question to, to maybe it's just a conversation mm -hmm. but do do you think people have animosity because one you're pretty like sorry you yeah, are pretty course. like you're mm -hmm. hot mm -hmm. sorry I, I mean like ba i've barely been able to enjoy it you know but, like, no, but, i'm pretty soon sure i'm gonna age out of that and i'm gonna be like man i wish i really enjoyed it but right. yeah, yeah 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 but i think it's hard for people they look at you you're mm -hmm. gorgeous and you're like what are you depressed about like what the fuck i by the way i'm saying this no no, no like, I, know, I know i it so it's like you doing stand-up and like they're seeing this girl who's so beautiful, seems like she has everything going on, and you t you're such a dark comic. Mm -hmm. And like I wonder, is that do you think it's just hard for people to, to get past that part? I think it's it's really hard for people to empathize or sympathize with somebody who appears to have everything. Yeah. And I'm not saying I appear to have everything, but I I am I know that I'm not ugly, and I do have a decent career, mm -hmm. and. I have cool friends and I, you know, I hang out in cool places and I take cool trips and like, you know, if you just look at Instagram, everything's amazing. Mm -hmm. But it's like the inside of me and my experience has been fraught with issues. You know, I had mm -hmm. a really tumultuous upbringing. I then to cope with that became a raging alcoholic mm -hmm. that stayed with me until I was 28 when I got sober. Then like more hard work it's just been like hard hard like I do feel like the only moment of respite and when I didn't give a fuck is when I drank right. like I was in college and I was like whoa <laughs> like that is when probably the most people hated me because I was really enjoying it like mm -hmm. 
I didn't give a fuck. And then when I got sober, I gave a fuck again. And I'm like, well, this is a drag. So it's like, yeah, you can. But, but I think that's like something that I learned, too, is, you know, you look at people on social media and you're like, they have everything they mm-hmm. have. They're making money. They're flying around on private jets. They're on yachts. They're this. They're that. But when I was going through my divorce, I put out my first comedy special and, you know, I got very fortunate that it did do really well. Not really well, but well enough. Better than I thought it would do. And everyone in the comedy community was like, oh, my God, you're blowing up. Like, everything's fucking. And meanwhile, I was at going privately, going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. I was never more sad. I felt crushed. I felt devastated. And my insides couldn't have been more a mess when outside everything looked like it was the best it had ever been. So I like learned in that moment not to trust the internet and not to trust what somebody looks like because you never know how somebody's feeling. You know what I mean? So I think that's a hard thing for people to consider when they look at me. They're like, oh yeah, she's pretty, she's this, she's that. But I'm also sad. (laughs) Yeah. I'm also sad a lot. (laughs) Don't worry, guys. I'm not having fun. (laughs) No, it's... Don't worry, I hate it here. (laughs) This fucking planet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I, I by the way, I, I'm I am going in on this because it's interesting to me. Because right. Because I understand that mm-hmm. it's like um, just in a way that you have this inner core like I do mm-hmm. of it's dark. It's dark. Yeah, it's it's dark. dark. And it takes a lot of work mm-hmm. for me to, you know, just be above. And that it doesn't matter what the fuck the outside is. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter, you know. Mm-hmm. So but you are in, in the comedy world. And right. so it's also, you know. Uh, you know, it's a whole package, right? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, and you just mentioned your child. You're from Wisconsin, Wisconsin, right? So, again, I'm sure you've said this on podcast before, but I don't actually know the story, which I'm interested in. Like, how did how did this girl from Wisconsin end up in Los Angeles, California, doing comedy? Well, uh, let's see. The short version, the shortest version is I was supposed to go to ASU for college, and then my mom stole my college fund, so I had to stay in Milwaukee. Okay, girl. Where's Love ASU, that. by the way? Arizona State. Okay, girl. I wanted to go party, <laughs> and I wanted a tan, okay. and I wanted my- pick picked I- the desert? <laughs> And eyebrow piercing. Those are like those are my priorities. I was like, I need my eyebrow pierced, <laughs> and then I want a tan, and then I want a drink. Um, so I'm like, ASU is where we belong. That's and sad. my mom stole my college fund, which was a blessing in disguise. But I ended up staying in Milwaukee for college. So I went to UW Milwaukee for a semester. Went to Marquette, um, and then while I was at Marquette, I met people i met a person who lived in la who was like i was at the time i was like interning at espn i wanted to be like the next aaron andrews but Yo, then girl. yeah you know i was like <laughs> oh my god uh, how about those 50 yards you were like whatever but i don't even know how to yeah, obviously it wasn't gonna happen for me uh, um <laughs> so and then i started i started dating athletes and i was like you guys are fucking morons i'm not gonna stand on a sideline and act like i care what you have to say so no offense did you start dating athletes though in college yes. like was that where it all yes. began i do wonder i'm like where did this where did athlete start? chase obsession. start okay. obsession it okay. was fully yeah um i don't know what's wrong with me honestly <laughs> wrong. like Nothing. it started when i went to marquette i transferred to marquette and they i was there was this white guy his name was grant it's not uh, important that he's white but grant. he is yeah he is he was white and he was cute and he was lovely and he came from a good family and we went on a few dates and i was like oh you're so charming and then after one of the dates he said has the basketball team found you yet <gasps> Okay. And I was like, there's a basketball team? <laughs> He's like, they're going to find you. And I'm like, I'm going to find them. Mm. <laughs> I was like, that's more interesting to me. Right. Yeah. So I. The whole team. Okay. The whole team. All of them. <laughs> One at a time, of course, but all of them. No, I. Um, <laughs> so then, you know, Grant and I ended. We went our separate ways. And then I found the basketball team. And then once, you know, the thing about Milwaukee is Milwaukee's a big like technically a metropolitan like big city but Mm -hmm. it's a small town like it's like they have the brewers and the bucks and the packers are up north but the brewers and the bucks so like there was one nice hotel in milwaukee and anytime like any of the nba teams came they would go to the one hotel there was one nice steakhouse and then there was one club so it was like so, it, like f- hooking up with athletes was literally like fishing with dynamite like it was right. so fucking easy because i'm like i know exactly where they are like if they're <laughs> right, out and about right. like they're here you know what i mean <laughs> so i yeah i mean once it was like the marquette team was like the big you know that was like me putting on my 
that was like training wheels. And then, <laughs> you know, I graduated to like NBA players and MLB players and like, they're, you know, it was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And then um, I met a guy who had an advertising agency out in LA and he's like, you should not be working at ESPN. You are really funny and really smart and you should look into writing. And I was like, but I don't know how to write professionally. And he's like, well, in advertising, it's like you barely write. It's like copywriters write like a tagline or, you know, mm -hmm. the most they'll ever write is like a manifesto for a brand. But it's not a ton of writing. It's like 60 second, 30 second commercials, whatever. Right. So he then introduced me to um, Brian Ford. So it was um, Kobe Bryant's ad agency. And of course it's Kobe Bryant's ad yeah. agency. And sure thing. he yeah. introduced me to Brian Ford, who ran the agency and then I got an internship out there and then um yeah I turned that into a whole career I worked in advertising for eight years um I got to like kind of the top like I was recruiting for Media Arts Lab which was Apple's um agency of record yeah so it was like I was making the most money and performing at kind of like the top of the game and I hated it and I was just like this is miserable and then like you know somewhere in there in 2012 I I started comedy, but it wasn't ever serious because I had a day job and I was doing other and I drank a lot. So I was like comedy to me in the beginning was like um, a fun thing, like a party. You know what I mean? But did you see somebody do comedy or did you know somebody in comedy that that was like the the bridge? No, or I think you just... like I was always attracted to comedy. Like I remember because I wasn't allowed to watch a lot growing up. But I remember when Dane Cook came out, like that was like every girl's, I think, introduction to comedy. Right. It's kind of like modern day Matt Rife, you know, like, right. or back in the day Matt Rife. Like I was like, what is this? <laughs> like it just truly was like magic. And then I, because I liked Dane Cook, he did David Tell's Insomniac tour and Greg Giraldo was on there. And I was like, this is actually more my style. Like I like this guy. He's like dark and he's funny. And so then I had like a little bit of like, I was interested in it, but mm -hmm. I never thought it was something I could do. And then when I worked at that agency, Zambezi, um, this guy, Tamara Catan, he was like quitting advertising to go do comedy full time. And he sat across from me at um, like our desks were across from each other. <laughs> yeah. And at the time I was um, I had to go to jail for my DUI and yeah. I was like mentally like not in a good place. And he's like, you should try comedy. It's like therapy, but it's cheaper. <laughs> And I was like, I could never, like, that's so scary. And then he's like, no, I have a teacher. He'll teach you how to write, da 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 whatever. And I was like, okay. So I took that class. And then I did comedy. And the first time I did comedy, I was like, oh, this is what I was born to do. Like, mm -hmm. this is it. And then, you know, I have to remind myself that now that I'm here and I'm doing it because sometimes it gets tiring. But, yeah, he basically got me into it. And I didn't ever – I didn't take it seriously until, like, 2019. I was like, I'm quitting advertising. I'm done. Like, the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then 2020 had, like, other plans for us. Yeah. Um. So I haven't really been full time comedy since like 2021, which uh, that's the year I put my special out. I was gonna, so how long have or you been doing comedy then? I started so in 2012, but okay. I did it for two years, like hobby comedy. Like I would do three shows a month okay. for two years, mm -hmm. and then I quit for two years. I completely quit for two years, and in those two years, I got sober. I kind of got my shit together, and then I came back in 2018. I started a show. I was, like, having people come do my show, but, like, still not getting a ton of stage time. Yeah. And then, so 2018, 2019, I was doing it, still not doing it in a full-time capacity. And then the pandemic hit, and then I was like, okay, I think I'm actually ready to film this stuff that I've been doing for the last few years. So I got ready in the pandemic, literally the way I got ready for my special that I shot from Hoda Housewife, is I was bounce on my mini trampoline and just say my set out loud. Like, I never said my 30 out loud until the day that I filmed it. Okay. Okay. You know? <laughs> no, that's insane. <laughs> like, I'm, the I'm trying to normalize it. I'm like, yeah. you know what? Sometimes it's just, that was you my know? first time saying it out loud. Sometimes like, it's just loud. Like, I was just bouncing in the backyard like Rain Man. Like, yeah. I'm just, like, saying my jokes and, like, my ex-husband will come out and be like... He couldn't believe how much tramp time I put in. Yeah. <laughs> you got skinny and... Yeah. <laughs> and I memorized <laughs> And everything. you memorized. Yeah. yeah. That... I, did, I don't know why I thought you had been doing stand-up longer than... I still, like, not that I'm... 2012, but you... I mean, it's not a lot of cumulative time. No, no, for no. For the amount of success that you've had. Thank you. But, yeah, no, it's 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 almost no time at all like i've only mm -hmm. been doing it because if you the pandemic truly 2020 you couldn't go out so 2021 22 23 24 four years yeah that's unheard of mm. a little bit 
I think. I don't know. It's, it's just, it took, to, to, honestly. I got very lucky. That, I got very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know. Like, no, I did. For I did. Th- this is all new information to me, which is yeah. really kind of cool. So, yeah. like, because all of this, because, but even your podcast now, mm-hmm. Jed, this is the worst. Yes. Because I've, I've known you, I don't, I'm, I don't know cumulatively how long we've, like, not even long. What, a year, a year and a half? A year, year and a half, yeah. Because even in that time, like, the, your life has been chocked full. And I remember you got off your tour, your mm-hmm. comedy tour. And by the way, did you enjoy touring? No. Okay. Next question. <laughs> do you want to do it again? So here's the thing. I, at the end of last year, the tour, <laughs> no. no, no, the tour killed me yeah. like being on the road just like the quick <clears throat> landing getting to a hotel working out taking a nap going on stage going to sleep waking up leaving going to another city that's not what i was wired to do mm-hmm. like it doesn't really work for me spiritually and at the end of it i did like this self-love retreat in sedona which is corny but it was actually really amazing mm-hmm. and there was this energy healer that i went to and she was like she kept telling me, she's like, whatever you're doing for work right now is not good for you. And I got so angry, like big feelings. Like I was like, fuck you. I'm like, I left a very high paying corporate job. I left my marriage. I left everything behind to pursue this. And you're telling me this isn't it. And she's like, energetically, it's not aligned. Like it doesn't work. And I was getting so angry. And she's like, what are some other things you want to do? And Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to do like movies and TV and podcasting. And she's like, okay, yes. She's like, when you talk about that energetically, like it feels more aligned. And I talk to, you know, comics that are on the road at like a higher level, like the highest level. Like I'm, you know, friends with Theo and like, even though they love it, they're all exhausted. Yeah. Everyone's just like tired and it's just like kind of such a rat race and it never ends. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if this is for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There there might be a chance where, I mean, I would love to get like a TV show or a movie or something where I'm pulled in a different direction for a few years and then I can revisit it and be in love with it again mm-hmm. because like I hated stand up last year. Like I fucking hated it. And then when I just shot the special that I just shot, I'm like, I don't even think that was good. Like I also hated that. And then now I'm like writing again and I like the stuff again, but I'm like, I don't like it enough to go on the fucking road. So I probably won't be on. The, I'll do a small tour in fall, maybe like two or three months. Last year was made in November and that almost killed me. So like, I don't know. I love comedy, but like the lifestyle of a comic, I don't know if it's for me. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. it's insanely hard. I mean, yeah. I just anytime I work with comics who are touring a lot, there's nothing about it that I'm like, this looks amazing. Yeah, You no. know, like or. Mm-mm. And, and some people like 100% are built for it. Like mm-hmm. they love this shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, God, it feels fucking lonely as shit. And yeah. then you go in front of a crowd. Every single crowd has a different energy. Mm-hmm. And you have to like, I don't know. that As somebody who is I'm pretty sensitive to that, like it, dri- it it's so – it drives me crazy. Yeah. Like I can't – so I, I, re- I relate to that yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I – because you had to, you headlined like you had to go yeah. up and do an hour yeah. at all of these shows, mm-hmm. and how did you? I, well, you obviously just did it, but I guess how did you deal with that feeling of like I hate that, like I don't want to be doing this when you had to do it. You know what was interesting is when I would get into the shows where I wasn't getting much from the crowd, and I'm like, oh, I have to be up here for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I almost became more comfortable with that. Like the when I really didn't like it, I became comfortable with it, and in a way where I would sit in it. You know what I mean? I think some people when they get nervous or they feel like a crowd isn't reacting, they're like, da, 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 da. okay, there's all my jokes. I would really just like <laughs> hammer into them. I'm like, no, this is funny. And you're going to laugh or like acknowledge like you guys hate me. Mm -hmm. Not as much as I hate me. So (laughs) don't even try. Like, you know what I mean? Like just like acknowledging like the tension. But like, I don't know. Some shows are great and magical and amazing. And those are the ones you do it for. And then some of them are like, this is work. It's just a day at work. You know what I mean? People Mm -hmm. go to work for nine hours a day and they hate their job from start to finish. So it's like we're fortunate that if we have a bad day or a bad night, it's only an hour. Yeah. It's not that much. 
Yeah. Yeah, but it is hard when you're like bearing your soul and they don't like it. You know, I'm like, these are well, yeah, bearing inside. Yeah. yeah. For an hour, you just yeah. have to sit and it's, it's like scraping. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I again, I've 100% been there. I, you know, I don't know. I'm a weirdo. Like, I don't, people don't expect what I, like, I'm not, I'm not okay. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm weird. It's, and it's sometimes it's jarring. Mm hmm. Yeah. Which to me is really funny. But at the same time, you have to go back to your hotel room mm -hmm. with yourself. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. that that to me is all I can do the stage time. Fine. Yeah. No problem. Like I can I'm used to I can handle that. Mm -hmm. But it's when you're by yourself that you're like, <laughs> I know. I know. I'm pretty sure this tough. is the end of the road for me. Yeah. I have, I'm not good at anything else. What am I? You know, you know, right. like that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. a thing. Yeah. No, it's tough. And then I have to just remind myself to be grateful, you know, mm -hmm. because every time, you know, my dad's so funny. When I first started doing stand-up, he's like, you're not, what are you talking about? You're not doing stand-up. Like, you keep your day job, you know, mm -hmm. like that whole kind of dad <laughs> mentality. Papa, yeah. And then when I was like, no, nah, I'm doing fucking stand-up. And I did it. And now he's like so <laughs> impressed and he's so like proud, even though he hates my jokes, mm -hmm. you know? He's like, could you write a joke that's not about like sucking dick? And I'm like, literally no. Um, <laughs> I literally can't. I've tried. No, but <laughs> now he's so proud. But now when I complain mm -hmm. about this job, he's like, okay, go back to advertising. He's like, go back mm -hmm. to recruitment. He's like, you know how to do that. You can do that. Go back to that. And he's like, what misery is worse? And I'm like, you're right. Because at least this is like, I'm following my dreams. You know, dreams mm -hmm. are for poor people, though. I'm like, I should have just married Rich. <laughs> you're still young, Brittany. Let's calm down. Okay. Like, you can do whatever you want. You think I can marry Rich still? I think I might have aged out of marrying Rich. Are you serious? Yeah. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I, I just believe. I'm like, bitch, you can be an astronaut. <laughs> bitch, bitch, go you to Mars. You want to do a, you want to be a scuba diver? You, you just want to get rid diver. of the competition. <laughs> you're like, no. Oh, yeah. You're really. We go to Mars. <laughs> I, like, bitch, no. burn up in the stratosphere. <laughs> We cannot be more opposite as performers. Like you're like, I know, I'm just no, no, no. But like, but physically, it's, <laughs> physically, physically, you want me gone? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, because there won't be another just you know white blonde right. girl that just fucking you know steps right in. I know how many times I get like, you look so familiar. I'm like, sweetie, <laughs> just an average white blonde girl. That's. Right. Right. That's it That's for it. us. Yeah. But do you feel so now you've you've done that and. Uh, and you're now doing your podcast with Brittany Ferlin. It's the best. And yeah, so that's what I, so you're kind of, you're pivoting into that thing yeah. that the healer or whatever, and, yeah. you know, yeah. so do you feel what the, the healer was talking about? Like that kind of yes. enthusiasm for it's, this? It's great. I think the thing with the podcast is it's one hour of work a week. <laughs> so people are like, oh, you have a podcast. You're so busy. I'm like, it's one hour of work a week. Mm -hmm. So like I am, I do better when I'm busy. So yeah. I need like more. I need more than that um, to feel like I'm not a non-contributing zero. Mm. So, I, yes, I love the podcast. I'm so grateful for the podcast. Um, we have been very fortunate with, like, a good following right away. Mm -hmm. Like, it just – it feels good, but I'm like, I need more. I need more. Do you know what more is right now? I mean, I'm going to Mallorca to okay. this. Yeah. <laughs> so – that's when we were talking about to circle back to the whale conversation. Yeah, the orcas. <laughs> she heard orcas. I said my orca. <laughs> my. Oh, I guess it's my orca. That's <laughs> it is your orca. It's your my whale. Orca. It's my wheel. <laughs> my orca. It's. Um, I'm doing this writers retreat, and they're supposed to help me get like my pilot in a good place. Yeah, it's me getting my pilot in a good place, and then lording over me which is something I sort of need. Mm -hmm. I've always needed somebody to tell me to get shit done, or I don't really get shit done. I used to be a self-starter more when I was married because, again, I had someone watching me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, when you have someone observing how you exist, you exist in a more elevated way. Yeah. Maybe this isn't you. Maybe this is just me. I was doing shit to yeah. be like, look at what a good human I am. I'm meditating twice a day. I'm working out. I'm drinking protein. I'm writing a screenplay. I'm writing – and then I got divorced and I'm like, I've just been like sitting on my couch rotting. And I'm like <laughs> – yeah. Maybe there's something to like having a person witness you. There is and there isn't. I for okay, I was watching why I'm going into there's a reason I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Cuz we have one thing in we have, we have a lot in common, but there's one thing we have in common. Um we no longer have mothers. Mm -hmm. And um I was watching a documentary with um Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. And he said 
in his answer, one of his answers, that when his mom died, he thought to himself, like, well, then what am, what am I doing? The, who am I doing this all for? Mm -hmm. Because his whole life was to impress his propelled yeah. to impress his mother, right? And so it was that question of, like, well, what the f what am I, who am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. But then it became a self-propulsion, right? right? Of, like, you have to pull your bootstraps up. Like, you just... Mm -hmm. Or not, you just lay down. Either yeah. that, you either lay down or you get the fuck up and like go do. So I guess. Get the fuck up and go fuck the nanny, Arnold. <clears throat> there you go. Which he did. Which he did. He and as a child. Yep. He's good, looking, baby. good looking dude. Really? Not really. But, uh, not really. <laughs> but he's prone to muscles. Okay, so. yeah. <laughs> but he's been on creatine since birth, so. I tried creatine once because I heard it on a fucking podcast. Hilarious. You were listening to Joe Rogan. Instant panic attack. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't even Joe Rogan. It was it was another influencer, pod, which I've reached. I think I've reached the tip top of my ability to take in information from influencers. I just can't do it anymore. Um, At least you can take in information from other places. I can't even retain a fact. Like what? I just I just can't. I read books and I'm like, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, you're going to a writer's retreat. Right, so let's go back. Okay, so yeah, but just um, a side note, I cannot do creatine. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, um, thank, you. thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah. If you get panic attacks because you're taking creatine, Stop taking call creatine. me. Yeah. Um, because that's Also, creatine's like from the 90s. Are people still <laughs> taking creatine? That's like my ex-stepmom got on like this fitness kick. She yeah. had like a midlife crisis when she turned 40 or something. Got on creatine, got jacked. I'm done. And literally would look like a fucking bulldog. She had no tits. Her tits were gone. It was oh, just no. pecs in a sports bra. Bulldog. And my dad was like, who is this for? He's like, because oh, I don't no. want to fuck you because you look like a small dude. <laughs> like you look like a little man. He said, who is this for? Who is this for? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, because it leads, it's my brain goes, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, yeah. I have another question that yeah. it just went right there, but I'm going to try to focus back. I'm disciplining my brain. Okay. It's not easy. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so you're going to this writer's retreat mm -hmm. that, again, the thing, you think you're not self-propelled, but every single time I talk to you, I'm like, where are you going? And it's always this retreat thing that you've signed up for, um, Turks and Caicos that you took a risky poo on that you've talked on about on your podcast, which was one of my favorite stories of all time when you went to Turks mm -hmm. with somebody you didn't even know. My lover boy. Yeah, I was like, I text him and be like, what's should up, you baby know? daddy? Should you? <laughs> what's up, baby daddy? Did you miss me? <laughs> no. No. So you're going on a writer's retreat, which you signed up for mm -hmm. all on your own. Mm -hmm. And your goal is you, I didn't even know you wrote screenplays. Mm -hmm. So you have a screenplay already written mm -hmm. and you're going to go to this sheep farm. Sheep farm. Yeah. And write another. It's not a screenplay though. It's just a pilot. Not as intense. But it's really difficult to write pilots. Like well, I am structure. finding that out. Structural nightmare. I'm working there's... with my friend now who's a TV writer. She's like, so what's the game? What's the plot? What's nope. the this? Yep. And I'm like, fuck off. Yep. I just have a story to tell. And she's like, that doesn't, that's not enough. There needs to be structure. There needs to be games. And I'm like, is this happening in every show I'm watching and I don't realize it? I don't yeah. think it is. No, it is. But it's fucking not. It is, dude. There's an apple is. cart that it's turned over eventually. I know. No, listen, I this is why I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed well, by don't you. Don't be impressed. I'm I impressed. Might go there Too bad. And just shit the bed. Too bad. You're already doing it. Yeah, You're doing well. it. You're going to go and do it and pet sheep because there's sheep on the farm. That's there's why I'm sheep. saying that. That's, yeah, that's. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, I, the first thing I ever did is I thought, I was like, I'll become a writer. Mm -hmm. I love writing. Like, I like stories. I like storytelling. But then when I went to these like seminars and workshops and classes, it was very structured. Mm -hmm. Like I even did a, because um, I thought I wanted to write sketches. <laughs> no. no, I don't. It's like math. Like I went and took a class oh at the Groundling or uh, uh, well, UCB. Yeah. And it was, yeah, hella structured. And I yeah. couldn't, like I failed the class miserably. Because yeah. I was like, I just want to tell the story. Yeah. I just want to tell, you know. So you're going to go there and learn structure. No, I need to learn structure before I go there. I mean, like, I have to learn that this week. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, you're going to watch a tutorial? Yeah, I'm in the middle of taking, like, this intensive pilot writing class. So I'm on, like, the fourth of six of them. So I'm okay. learning. Okay. Oh, okay. You're f Well, I feel like you're, like, on a whole new – and the other thing I'm going to ask you about, because you posted about it very publicly on Instagram, and I messaged you right away. I was like, girl. But, again, I'm going to ask you this because it was public – and it's a hot topic right now. Ozempic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, girl, 
Really? Because I, it's just, it's always so interesting to me because I look at you, I'm like, you have, I told you this in the message. I was like, you have like the Mecca. You have mm. a Mecca body. Mm. Why would you want to? But then again, I was like, Sarah, shut the fuck up. You don't know anybody. No, I journey. love you. And I love hearing that. And thank you. Um, here's the thing. I might be getting off Ozempic. I really like it. It really just limits your appetite to next to none. It's been helping me with my sleep and my focus. But I am losing my ass. Mm, see, And that is my prized jewel. That is my family heirloom. So mm. I can't not have an ass. So there's a chance I get off of it. Um, but I get the hype. The hype is hypey and it's worth it. Like it's it's really insane. It's no side effects. You just shoot, shoot your little tummy up and then you don't really need to eat. Like your body just eats its fat. Okay. But do you get sick? I do. No. Like, I the, first no day, the first day I got nausea and I was like, okay, if this is part of it, I'm not doing it. I yeah. got nausea. I took a cold shower, snapped it out. I haven't been nauseous since. And that was it, just the that first time? Just once, just once for like six hours. Okay. And then I took a cold shower and it went away. How long have you been doing it? Three weeks. And what made you want to start doing Ozempic? Because I just feel like I want to have like a skinny moment. You know what I mean? Like I've never had anyone worry about my weight. Like I've never had anyone be like, have you eaten, like you need to eat a cheeseburger. You know, I've never had anyone be like, are you okay? And I feel like that's like the goal in life is to like make people worry about you in some capacity. And then, you know, like. Your Wisconsin ancestors are rolling in the grave right now. They're rolling in cheese fondue right now. They're not in a grave. They are. I mean, well, my mom's, but anyway. So, no, I just want to have a moment that's like a sleigh, like a skinny sleigh moment. I'm sick of this like arm fat. It's, you know, it's all in my head and mm. everyone can tell me you're perfect. I don't care. I just want to have like, I want to have the moment everyone else is having like a post Malone moment. Like he's a popsicle stick now. Okay. But then like once you get your moment, then what's your next moment? Probably getting fat again. <laughs> you're not. No, I know I'm not fat. I know. I, can't, no, I, I know have to I'm keep my fat. mouth shut because no, 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 I, no, just, I, yeah. no, I know I'm not. And I also don't have like, I think I have a little body dysmorphia, but I've never had like disordered eating or anything like that. So I don't think like, I, I do think this is going to be like max. I'll do this for like six months. Like I'm having a true moment. Six months? Yeah. How much weight do you want to lose and how much weight have you lost? I have lost five pounds. Okay. And I want to lose, like, 20. <laughs> okay. No, judgment-free zone. I it just, doesn't feel like it. No, I'm just kidding. I know. you might. That's okay. No, I, know, but, I don't want to make you feel no, like no, no. that. No, no, no. So my, like, happy, healthy weight is 135. And okay. I'm, I thought I was 150 when I started the Ozempic. And then I didn't, I don't have a scale in my house because I don't believe in scales. I think they're like evil yeah. and they make me crazy. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a scale in my house, but I was like, wait, I need to know if I'm like actually losing weight or yeah. not because I didn't think I was. And when you're in your own body, it's hard to see change. So I was like, I actually have to buy a scale to like see if this is working because the doctor's like, if it's not working, you can up your dosage. But I'm like, I don't want to up my dosage if it's working and I'm just a head case. So I got a scale. And when I got the scale, I was already two weeks into Ozempic and mm -hmm. I was 151 mm -hmm. and I'm like oh this is a crisis that means like I was w way heavier than I thought I was I was just like happily at like 155 or something like that okay. so since I got <laughs> the scale I've lost like five pounds okay do you know what do what you want to do I'm just as another woman again you have an amazing body. Thank you. And it is something like I've lost my ass a long time ago. I used to have one when I played volleyball, but those yeah. days are over. Yeah. And so uh, genetically, it's not in my lottery. Right, right, right. And that's okay. Like yeah. I have to work really hard. Yeah. So it's just all I'm, I'm giving you praise. Do Thanks. do your life. Yeah. Here's the thing. If I continue to lose just ass and like the stomach doesn't go away and the arms don't go, <laughs> I'm fucking off. I'm done. I'm not. You're not just getting rid of my ass. And then what? I keep my fucking stomach and my fat arms. Fuck off. I was epic. Fuck off. I will sue them. <laughs> You'd be, be the first class the first action one. lawsuit for them ruining my fucking body. They're like, there this are is for people with diabetes. Like, what are you even doing? And I'm like, F how about fuck you? Fuck you. 
<laughs> yeah, God, please do a lawsuit. By the way, have you? I don't know if you've been on social media this morning, but um, have you seen the thing? It's speaking of lawsuits, there's a lot going on. P did, did is he, happening. P diddler. Uh, the P diddler. The P that's diddler. happening. No, I think <laughs> if he doesn't talk about somebody who's probably a flight risk for killing themselves, uh, if he doesn't do that, I am curious to see what the fuck they have on him because to flee the country without your kids yeah who they got arrested by the way both of them Ooh. didn't his kids, the kids his two sons oh no, no no i'm talking about the young girls like oh, he has no. like babies i think i thought maybe i misread but maybe it was why did his sons get arrested they were in the house like they went and invaded the house and they just that's who they got you didn't see p diddler anywhere no he, he's he out on a jet, he's on a to the jet. yeah he's going to like a place where they're safe yeah he probably has what what do you think he put on that jet 50 million dollars in cash and seven small girls i know seven <laughs> small children uh, they're not girls by the way he's oh no. Not ex- no 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 i think he's he's, he's a gay lord no he's an Yes, bitch. Are you, have you been living under a rock? Yes. Oh, my God. I try to look at Instagram and the news as little as possible. Because well, every I, single time I go on there, I'm like, well, this is it. I'm yeah. burn the world. That's yeah. it. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, I no, really try hard to. equal not. opportunity did learn. But, yeah, <sighs> lots okay, of how? young guys. Okay. Well, there's that. And then the other it's thing. It's like Bieber, Usher, Meek Mill. Like, a lot of these guys are getting into the mix here. Are you serious? Mm. I can't e- I had no idea. Yeah, like when he was, was when they were like young shop. artists, he's like, "Come to my house and we'll record." And then like Usher's in a video in an interview, being like, "I was 14 and he like took me to the club and I didn't want to be there and I wanted to make music." Like he like, there's some like real shady shit that's about to come out. Oh my! Yeah, this I'm still I'm the most naive person you'll still yeah probably ever meet. I'm yes. like. Thank you yeah, so like much. No, it's just a mental illness. It's yeah. not really something that, yeah, that I like appreciate you. Yeah, <laughs> it's Yeah, yeah. It's the um the one thing uh, that I know kind of that went down from your podcast, and I'm curious because we haven't talked since then about the Army Hammer stuff because it was interesting, not in a bad way, because I saw which was crazy, like TMZ, People Magazine, like major publications, and there you are, your little face. One was they had a photo of you from like years and years oh ago. God, I'm like, people that did me dirty. Well, I'm like, why did they choose that? What people is she, 16? Fucking did why did they do dirty? that? So the thing is, those are the only images available for me for purchase on Getty. They didn't ask me. All the other oh publications like, well, like look on Instagram. Like yeah. fucking something normal. No, that's like before I had lips, before I knew how to curl my hair. I'm like sweating, like Shaq at the foul line. <laughs> you just look young. That's all. Yeah, but they put like the hottest picture of army <laughs> like the hottest picture of army and then the ugliest picture of me and i'm like the funny thing is the roles are reversed now he does not look that good he looks like you know he's got a lot of miles on him i haven't seen him in a while and but yeah I he's like you. got a fucking shaved head no beard not a good look and mm. um then i look better but yeah yeah, that was the real attack. Was that People magazine? Used it that was. Picture. Yeah, it was. I was. I I couldn't believe it. I was like, would they choose a picture when she's sixteen? Like that photo. Yeah. But is have things kind of evened out? Like, and how was that for you? Because we hadn't talked. Yeah, yeah, during yeah. That no, time. it was like. I mean, you were aware of the situation yeah. while it was situating. Mm-hmm. So, um, situating. While it was situating. Um, yeah, it was relatively uneventful like he of course has cronies that like fucking came after me in the comments and the dms and told me i'm full of shit and this is a lie and i'm like uh trying to here's the thing about army it's like there's no juice left in that or like there's nothing left to squeeze out of that like the drama and like everything that came out during the pandemic about him so like i wasn't coming forward and saying it because i wanted some like salacious tabloid fame like it was literally because he's a bad man who got worse Mm -hmm. you know because i think people who then find aa and slaa in these programs of recovery and then manipulate them Mm -hmm. into masquerading as some sort of savant like he's helping people like he's a sober coach and he's like saving people i'm like this guy's like actually well, he's a psychopath and everybody knows that, but he's actually dangerous to people trying to recover also. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the way yeah. that he sober coached and the things that he did, like, you know, the tattooing and the even just like hooking up with multiple women in this guy's house while you're supposed to be keeping him sober. You know, like mm-hmm. it was just like really 
kind of dangerous and sloppy behavior. And I think what he's doing is this PR stint mm. of I am recovered. I'm better. Robert Downey Jr. is my sponsor. Oh, he fully said that in the Rolling Stone article, which I thought was so inappropriate to like name drop that. But anyway, it's he's super like, weird, yeah. yeah, he's doing like this whole thing of like, I'm better. And I'm like, you're actually worse. You know what I mean? So that's why I said it. And I found out he had he had a fiance a mm. week after we stopped talking. So I'm like, it's not impossible, but it is improbable that you were single when we were seeing each other. Yeah. So I think just like the, you know, the amount of lies he told me, um, it was really impressive. And then like the amount of women that came forward. To me, when I did it and said I was dating him at the same time, this is what he did to me, sent me, excuse me, pictures of, like, their bite marks and, like, all the, like, you know, stuff that ARMY does. Yeah. Like, they all, um, they were really, like, shocked and horrified that they were also being lied to. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, people can look at it and be like, you're a fucking idiot if you think that he's going to be any different. And I don't disagree with those people. I do think I was like in a really vulnerable position and I was really fucking stupid. And I believed what I wanted to believe, which was that he was better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, people have their opinions of that, but like, it wasn't like some big thing. Like, I think mo more people probably talked about it behind my back and to each other than to me. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like nobody came to me and was like, I mean, a, f a few of his people like on social media, but nobody came like directly to me. Nobody really yeah. cared, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get your tattoo removed? Do you, were those the, the ones on your hands? Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually like them. They're not bad. Well, the thing is, it's not like you got his name tattooed. Right. right. It's not like an A. And I, I like them. I don't know if I like having the same tattoo as him. I don't know if I like having matching tattoos. But I'm already in the process of getting so many tattoos removed. <laughs> so, and also, like, I really, for some reason, don't know that these would come out because he did stick and poke. And when I say he poked did me he to the bone. Did he actually do the stick yes. and poke? He did. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And when I say he an did artist. it to the fucking bone, like, I'm like, I don't know if these would even come out because he was, like, really in his masochism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And was there any alarm bell in your head that's like, I, we probably shouldn't be getting, I shouldn't get matching tattoos with this dude. I've just met him. No. Did, I just went right past no, that. No, because I was like, he's a love bomber and I was fully in the love bomb. I'm all in on a love bomb. And yeah. I hate that about myself. And now because I'm, you know, also working a different program, mm -hmm. I'm not. And if somebody like calls me babe or does like the love bombing stuff too soon, it's a red flag and I'm not interested. But at the time, it was at the tail end of that tour, which was, again, like such a, a fucking I was an emotionally in a really bad place. Yeah. Um, and I felt so lonely and he kind of felt like a, a savior in some ways. You know, I was like, oh, this is amazing. I deserve this. I deserve this love. <laughs> I deserve this adoration. I deserve to have like this tall, handsome man obsessed with me. Yeah. And then I fully just like ignored the fact that he's a liar and a monster and truly insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, did, so I guess, so it's calm now, like ever since that yeah, podcast no, came out yeah. and did. It was like a day of like media frenzy and like, also it was like, you really realize how lazy the reporting is because like, <laughs> yeah. it's like people wanted to get on the phone with me and I was like, fine, whatever, I'll take the interview. And then I was like, hey, every question you're asking me, I answer in the podcast. I'm like, just watch the podcast. I'm like, mm -hmm. you guys are so lazy. Like, the reporting is so lazy. They're like, we haven't had time to watch the podcast. I was like, the amount of time I talk about him in the podcast is 10 minutes. This yeah. phone call has been 15 minutes. Yeah. Go watch the fucking podcast. Like, I'm not re-repeating myself. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I did. I Because I watched that podcast actually this morning mm -hmm. just to like, you know, kind of. Yeah. It wasn't the most current one, but yeah, it was, yeah. I think, a bigger one. Yeah. And I was, I didn't read the comments or anything like that. But did people receive it well? Or was that one of those things that you could literally had to just not even look at the comments? Yeah, I don't. It wasn't? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys ever read them? Does, Brit does the other Britney other read Britney them? Reads she them. does. Other Britney's in Oof. there. She's in there. Um, Woo! But for some reason, it. She likes to. And I don't. I've never been a comments person ever since my stand up came out. And, mm -hmm. you know, I talk about such polarizing stuff. And, you know, I know I'm not for everybody, but I don't need to see that. I think I've seen enough of people's distaste for me and like the few comments I wish I hadn't seen. So I'm like, I'm, I'm good if I don't ever get any of those again. And on the flip side, I don't need the comments where people are like, I love you. I'm obsessed with you. Because I think all of that people's opinions of us are just bad for us. Like we don't need to know all that stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, it's a, I, I, trust me, I wonder that 
all the time, especially with you guys talk about provocative things and you're really intimate and you're very open and you talk about some serious shit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always, I always wonder in, in how much you indulge in that. And I mean, people are off the, are unhinged on mm -hmm. the internet anyway. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's just a new form because you were doing stand up and then you mm -hmm. went into this podcast mm -hmm. world. Yeah, you I know. think my stand up is very like calculated. There's no mm -hmm. real fat on the jokes. You can kind of get a feel for me, but you don't really know me really when you watch my stand up. Mm -hmm. But the podcast is like, <laughs> I know you know more than I know about me. You know? I know. Well, that's just, so. That's what I mean. Do you en you enjoy that aspect? Yeah. I enjoy podcasting I like for that. I mean, I get like the podsiety every once in a while. Podsiety. I'm like, oh no, did I overshare? What the fuck did I just <laughs> say? You know what I mean? I'm like, oh fuck. But then the reality is, nobody cares. We're all gonna die. Mm -hmm. Literally, everyone's gonna forget us. And these podcasts. I mean, these podcasts are probably gonna live on a fucking server that outlives fucking humanity. Yeah. So it's just it just doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Yeah. Is that like your coping mechanism? And I, I said, nihilism. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just like it doesn't. It just doesn't. So you don't get in, you know. So it yeah. doesn't go down the swamp of sadness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. from the never-ending story. Yeah. And it's anyway that was a reference, but um, yeah. but yeah, is that like how you get along with it? Get along on your daily life? Yeah. Yeah, like it just it's doesn't, silly. Doesn't matter. I mean, if I get too like caught up in the anxiety of like, is this? I'm here right now with my fucking special that I just shot. Like I said, I'm like. <sighs> This thing is not good enough. I do not like it. These jokes are not strong enough. I don't like the way I look. Like, I'll, I'll, I can go down that forever, but why? Yeah. Why? And you just, so, and you're, are you talking about the special you just shot? Yeah, you were there. At the, yes. Yeah. Okay, that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we won't talk about that one. Because it didn't, right? What? Okay. You just shot a special. Mm -hmm. Those at the Roosevelt. Yes. Yeah. And I was there. Yeah. And all your friends were there. You shot two shows? Yeah. And it ended up. It's. It won't be. It won't be aired. No. 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 Right? It's not or that it, it won't be aired. Okay. No, I'm no, sorry. No. I. Okay. Great. No. No. Thank no. you. Please no. help me. It's that I'm in the process right now creatively. Eight hundred pound gorilla was supposed to be my partner, okay. and they backed out. And um, I have very strong thoughts about that <laughs> that I'm not going to say on this podcast. <laughs> um. But now it's kind of like me as a creator. I have to be like, do I put this out on my own? Does it deserve to see the light of day? You know, all those kind of thoughts that we go down. We're like, is this strong enough? Is it better than my first one? Uh, is it strong enough? Maybe. Is it better than my first one? In my opinion, no. Uh, does it deserve to be seen? Maybe. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I go down like this really... But then again, I go to the next thing, the next thought, which is, it doesn't fucking matter. Put it out. Who cares? Mm -hmm. The worst thing that can happen is nothing. Right. So when do you plan on putting it out? I don't know. Okay. I mean, it's like I, I'm still waiting for my production company to get me the edits. So I'm like, ugh, I wanted to put it out on my birthday, which is April 28th. It's not likely that's going to happen because I haven't – I'm going to be gone for three weeks before it. So it's not like I'm going to be able to lay the groundwork to promote it. Yeah. And I also just don't know. I don't know if we end up shopping it to another company like to pair with and that always takes time. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Okay. All right. What's well, one of the last questions I'll ask you? And I have one more after this. Okay. <laughs> so what? Okay. So what are you looking forward to? Like, what's something that like gets your boat? Besides, like maybe the writing workshop. Yeah, the writers retreat. I'm very much looking forward to. Right. Yeah. yeah but like, what you know, like what's fire in your fire in your gut right now? That nothing, you're like really, really, truly nothing, truly nothing. I. <laughs> I mean, just nothing. No. I mean, like, am I excited for the writer's retreat? Yeah, kind of, but also kind of not. I'm kind of terrified. I think I'm going to be That's probably good. the weakest writer there. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm scared of that. I just think everywhere I go, I'm a little scared that I'm a fraud. Mm. And I probably am, but I, like, everybody else, I, everybody has imposter yeah. syndrome. So it's like, I just need to get over myself. But yeah, no, there's nothing that is exciting me right now. Okay. Some days are like that. You know what? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. There's some years are like that. Yeah. They always say, what is it? Like you're in the hallway. Is there, yeah. Have you heard this like yeah. in the sober land? But like, yeah. Or just in life in general, I think like you'll be in the hallway. You might yeah. be in the hallway for a day. You might be in there for a year. You yeah. might be in there for years, plural. Like you don't know. But like decorate the hallway. Yeah. Do you know? Like, yeah. I don't know. That little stuff like helps me. It sounds like what's what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm happy to not be in the fucking suicidal depression I was in last year. So just existing is fine. But I feel like I just need a little more 
direction and I don't know where to find that. So let me know if you have any ideas. Well, what, can I ask you one last thing? Yeah. I mean, I always say that. That's a famous, I've got to stop saying that. But like, yeah, like what do you do to get inspired? Like what do you, what's your jam? Do you, uh, like for instance, for example, like I, in the like morning times I have to, like I do a lot of meditation. Mm-hmm. Meditation is very important to me. Super. Or I'm fucking out of my mind. And I also get like, you know, visions and stuff. So is, and like, is there something that you do to propel you to the next, to get inspiration? Mm, I mean, I meditate and I journal. I think truly I can't keep looking for inspiration. I think sometimes it has to be okay for me to just be in a healing moment. Mm -hmm. Like I can't constantly be like, I need to be inspired. I need to make this. Because then that's like putting all this extra pressure on my life that I don't need when like right now I think what I need is to just like heal. And I've been sleeping a lot lately. And I think I just need to like take care of myself and prioritize that. And then like when the time is right, it won't miss me. The inspiration won't miss me, Mm -hmm. but I don't go seeking it. Got I it. think right now I'm just seeking like serenity. Yeah. Yeah. I love the yeah. you're serene. But that but that is, you're in it. Like that's a yeah. thing. There's no end game. That's what that's what I mean. It's not like, oh, I'm inspired. Like right, right, right. yeah. You're, it's just all different textures and flavors all yeah. the time. So it's the last thing I do in my podcast. That's for real. I swear okay. my life. So, you know, I do like I'm an artist and yes. shit like that. Yep. So Okay. This is what I do with everybody. Everybody's done this. Okay. If it makes you feel any better. Okay. So what we do really quickly. So there's that. Here's this for you. They're paint markers. Okay. Um. So I do this thing called a no look drawing. And so not to touch the microphone, and I did. It's okay. I've, okay. I've needed seven hundred times since I've been in the studio. Okay. Um. And I fidget with my hair a lot, which I'm trying to work on myself. So, okay, so you don't look down at the canvas, and then we draw each other, and uh, it takes, like, literally 30 seconds. And okay, then, so you tr- Just, like, you look at me, and you try to draw me without looking down at your canvas. No pressure. Okay. Literally, people have drawn a circle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And and that's a thing. Like it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. And so then obviously I'm gonna start on you. No pressure, Brittany. I swear to God on my life. You should see some of the ones I have. Um <laughs> it's kind of fun though, right? I love it. Okay, good. Um <laughs> okay, good. okay, so the name of the podcast is called Not Cool, right? Yeah. So I usually why well, I always ask people, so what either A, what's the most not cool thing about you? Uh-huh. Or what's the most not cool thing that's happened to you? Oh my god. I know there's not cool. I mean, like my whole life has been like not cool. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the most not cool thing that happened to me is when I got raped. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and make that a clip. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Time and that's back. exactly what happened. I was flagged out and I woke up and there was a guy inside of me and I was like, who are you? And he was like, Rico. And I was like, not cool. Yeah. Oh, and then Rico. I left. Rico. <laughs> Why does it have to be Rico? Rico. I mean, that's just his name. Is that what got you sober? Or was that no, one of the one of the bottoms? Not even close. Not even close. Not even, I know. Not even I, know. Close. I, I just chalked that up to the game. You know, I was I like, felt that's, that as soon as I said partying. it. <laughs> I was like, that wasn't it. I was like, that is just <laughs> what. Wait, are you done? I'm done. That's how long it takes. I, it's, it's, please don't. This- <laughs> First of all, mine's a sleigh. The fact. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's really close. My lips look fire. <laughs> I love that. I'm getting rid of my glasses and my hair. I'm just going to shave it. Oh, you didn't like. No, no. I are you ready it. for this? Yes. This is almost identical. I can't even believe it, actually. I'm like, Brittany? <laughs> Not the teeth. Not the little dick teeth. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, I feel like mine is... Mine Yours is really good. <laughs> For not looking down, it it's once. precise, dude. Yeah. It is mine. I mean, one, one side of the hair is much longer. Yours is giving um, Van Gogh. Yours is, right? Yeah. You said not the dick teeth, all four of them. <laughs> oh anyway, thanks for playing that dumb game with me. I love it. I love it. I mean, look. Who's who? Honestly. Who's who? All right, my That's sweet, sweet baby love. That was the funnest not. That's the funnest drawing I've actually done with anybody. That really? was amazing. Yeah, no one's ever said dick teeth. I appreciate <laughs> 
I didn't think my data was going to include dick teeth today, <laughs> but it did. And so scavenger hunt, cross that off. I appreciate it. Oh um, I love you so much. And listen, you. you know I'm a big fan of you. I really do believe that if if you wanted to be a, a rodeo rider, like you could. I'd be like, you know what? If she doesn't kill herself, the world <laughs> is her oyster. If you just stay upright, if boo, just stay, we got you. Yeah, just you stay breathing. Yourself, yeah. Okay? Just stay alive. Um, by the way, I think – that's a thing. No one fucking talks about it. But I think there's a lot of people that walk around all the time just being like, oh, like, this is hard. Yeah. This is really fucking hard. Yeah. So uh, – so yes, so I love you, and I believe I so you. much in you, and I'm very excited to see what happens for you, and in your love life, and your career life, and your all your lives, your all your lives. Thank you. You thank have a bunch you. of different lives. Um, is there so? I know this is a hideous part, but is there anything? Where can people find you? Is there anything coming up that you want people to like your podcast? Oh yeah, um, this is the worst pod. So um, is the podcast? My Instagram is Brittany Schmidt. B r i t t a n y s c h m i t t. No D's. I took all those in college. Um, oh, and it's BrittanySchmidt.com for my tour dates, which will be never, <laughs> which will be announced. Later, I'm going to do a fall tour, but nothing pressing. Okay. Yeah. Well, have a really good time on your writer's retreat. I Thank can't you. wait to see your show. Thank it's going to be on Netflix. Netflix. I, I'm a little bit psychic. I swear to God. Yeah. I've called some things. I've yeah. called some things. I don't want to brag about it, but I have. I um, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for joining uh, myself and Brittany Schmidt. Big fan. Please follow her. Watch all she does. She's been on a, my podcast. Is not, she's been on Burt Kreischer. She, uh, fucking Honey. Uh, so many huge podcasts. She has specials, uh, specials plural. Um, her podcast with Brittany Furlan is so good. This is the worst. They read people's people write in and they tell stories like their worst stories and Brittany and Brittany share. There's it's so good. So uh, just become a huge fan. Don't like stalk her, but definitely follow her. Subscribe to what they're doing and subscribe here if you like it. And thanks for joining us. Stay not cool. Bye. Stay not cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, you want more Not Cool? Then go to Instagram and subscribe to Not Cool Pod and or on my own personal page, which is Sarah Highland Rosenstein. And please don't forget to rate and review and of course, subscribe. Thanks for listening and watching you guys. Stay Not Cool.